So it's been a while since I actually did this, um, the last time I did the guide for hardcore, but since I have a lot of time in my hands, well not really a lot of time, but I decided that the easiest video I could do that won't require as much editing, even though the first one did actually have a lot of editing, that shit took me like, it took me one day to make it, but it took me like, out, like, like around like seven, eight hours. So yeah, um... I'm just gonna cut to what we should do. So then, after a uh, volcano progression, which ended off with you killing Magma Turtle, you should go to this cave around in the forest. It's not that hard to find. You just kind of just like since since when you leave the forest health 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 once you leave the forest house, you'll be facing this way. Just go go to the right and go to this hole in the mountain right here, and you'll fight a boss called Yagaroth. So I'll cut to that. All right, so not Yagaroth. So here's his attack pattern. So he goes a small jump, small jump, then a big jump, and then either do nails. Or an attack where he just summons a bunch of slime, which you can't parry either of those, but it will um, damage you a lot. So yeah, just be careful of that. But you could use them to your advantage though, because they do give you iframes, like that. See, so, look, I'm, I'm using the iframes from it to tank the big attacks. So yeah, and that's, yeah, since, since we already have a lot of gear for this, I also, sometimes he does two big jumps instead of um, the normal jumps. But yeah, and we're done with Yagaroth. We have the Crotet Scalpel, but I kind of want the... We're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna get the copper spoon first so we can see what we can do with this. So yeah, I'll cut it to I'll cut it to when we get to the next area once we get a copper spoon. Oh no no no! Also that um we also need to get a bunch of scrap metal. We need 15 scrap metal because we're gonna be heading off to Savannah after this so that we can get our next gear. All right then. So you should have at least like 500 gold and 15 scrap right here. Although we don't have the rusty spoon, I don't think it's really necessary. But crowded scalp will be a very important accessory after this. So what we'll be doing now is we'll be heading off to the savannah, which once you get to the Pogo Path right here, all you need to do is turn a hard right, which is above some like lake, and then you'll be at the savannah. So I'll cut it to that. I don't think I said like that. All right. So now, we're, now we're at the um the savannah. This is the secondary area after the mountain. I mean, area. I would definitely suggest try avoiding as much enemies as possible because holy shit, that's a Mondo. Oh my god, get me out of here, please. If you guys see any Mondo enemy at the stage, just completely avoid them unless you're good at the game. All right. So now we're at the, um, this area, whatever it's called, the Stone Surgeon. You want to get this mirror right here, in this house right here. And also, something something kind of important later on, we're going to do this quest because it'll give us a pretty good armor set. Alright. So what you want to do now is, since you have your gold and uh, scrap metal from killing Yagaroth, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to this little, little dude right here, named Kenneth. And you can, you can either get scrap score or scrap longsword, but... Just me, guys. Scrap Longsword. You always want to buy this. This is so much better than the Scrapsicle. Well, at least in this stage. Or, you know, it's whatever. So, yeah. That's that. So, what we do now is after getting the Scrapsicle, and the Scrapsicle, the Scrap Longsword, which we're going to clip right here, which I would definitely just getting like any Reforge, Light, Small, or Legendary, those three. And. Um, yeah, we're gonna be- what we're gonna do now is we kind of don't really need anything. Actually, wait, we might need something from this dude right here. I think the Cardinal might be pretty good. Oh, that's a really expensive, though. Eh, I mean, if you want to min-max your build, then yeah, go for the Cardinal, which I am gonna grind for after this, which we do need our Sapphires for, but we'll do that later. But anyways, what you want to grind for mainly is the Combo Glove, which are from Copper Ants. I mean, you could get the, um, if you wanted to, a side option for a melee would be the Feral Scimitar, but I wouldn't recommend it. Also, this is a really good area for farming gold and, um, resources. So, yeah. Um, I'll just cut it to when, um, something, something interesting happens. Or, you know, when I, when I get it. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Well, we got the combo glove on our first couple of kills. All right. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to be heading off to our next area, which is the, the mountains. Alright, so now we're at the entrance of the mountain, which is where Yagoroth was. I know that the progression should have been to just go straight to mountain, but I feel like getting Scrap Longsword, which is really weapon upgrade by the way, you should definitely grind this. And also, you don't really need Sunbreaker over Cardinal, it's just that if you want to, it's, it's a side option. Also, I changed up some accessories, you should swap out your Thorn Ring and Cactus Fruit for these two items. These are pretty good. And this, this should be your loadout, and I just want to beat these skills. I didn't shoot my skill yet, but if you want a 3-point skill with, you know, my level right now, then... Probably either go rude, rampage, or tank. Oh gosh, the skills are kind of dookie. But anyways, we should probably talk to this dude right here, because this dude gives us a quest. Even though we're not going to use any of the stuff it gives us, because, you know, Rock Wando, Stance, and all the other stuff is not really that good, unless you're, like, full endgame. And also, like, the stuff is kind of, like, like, a hassle to grind for, and also get the stuff you want for it. So, like, yeah, I would not, I would not recommend doing the quest. But if you just want to, then sure, why not? 
Alright then. So what so what are we here for? So we're here for sapphires. Because one thing that'll be very crucial in our progression is getting uh, the gem pickaxe, which we'll be using because um, we're, we're, we're gonna need it to get to the game's final boss. And also, be careful for these dudes. Just, yeah, frost assassins. But that's why we have that's why the sunbreaker for because we can we can we can just get hit and go straight here because it will do extra damage to the uh, ice enemies because you know ice is immune. Not ice is immune. <laughs> ice is uh, weaker against you know fire. So yeah. Um, we're just here for the sapphires. There's nothing primarily here that we, like, need. I mean, if you want to, you could get Lyre, which is up there. It's 2,500 gold. You can walk on that plank right there with my cursor. Um, it's really good, by the way. I, I just want to say that it's really good. Um, you get, you get, you lose a bunch of defense, but get a bunch of strength and 15% swing speed. It's, it, it was probably the best, uh, chest plate for melee in this game, but we're not going to get it because... Um, we're not, we're too broke, and also, um, for the normal hardcore player, I, or, like, casual player, I don't think that getting, um, something that does that to you is pretty, you know, it's kind of necessary, so, yeah, we'll, we'll get a later in progression, though, I promise. So, yeah, we're just, we're just gonna be grinding sapphires, and, yeah, that's pretty much it for the mountain. I mean, there are accessories we can't get here, but we're not gonna need any of them, because everything else we have on us is already as good. And, yes, there are bosses here, but we don't need to kill them, because they don't have any good drops. So, yeah, we'll just cut it to when we're done. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention before we cut to when I'm done getting all the sapphires, you have to go to this little outpost right here, which I did watch earlier, and you go to this little inn right here, to where you can go inside and get the mirror, which will be really helpful, really helpful later. Alright, now that we have our sapphires, what we're gonna do now is return back to Kennet and buy the gemstone pickaxe. We don't really need cardinal because, you know, this armor set's also, like, pretty much better, but you can get this if you want to, I don't really care. So now we have the gemstone pickaxe. Um, we don't really need it right now, but it, 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 will, it will just be a nice addition to have because what area we're going to do now is the deep desert, which is um, it's in the volcano, which you, you can go to Magma Turtle and go to the left. I don't know. I can't really show where it is because I can't, can't really see it. Or because we have the gem pickaxe, we can just go to Desert Outpost. And if you circle around here into the secret little like compartment, um, you can use your gemstone pickaxe to break through this door or this one over here and then boom you're in the deep desert and we're gonna need a lot we're gonna grab a lot of stuff here because you know there's a lot of important shit here but this is the last area for this guide but yeah so here's what we're gonna do so from sand pods we're gonna we're gonna need a sand pod antenna i think it'll be i mean it, it's not mandatory but i haven't really done too much about like actual hardcore progression and also, Sandpod Spear is also a really good weapon to just have on the side. It's basically just... I don't know what to think of this weapon, honestly. It's it, its its just a spear version of the Scrap Longsword, which is... I guess it's pretty cool if you think about it. I didn't... What the heck? I didn't even know Red Lens had that stuff on it. I don't know. I, for, I forgot Red Lens was reforged in this game, honestly. But yeah, we're going to be... From the, from the baby Sandpods, what we're going to be needing is the sandpod helmet which will just give us a bunch which is basically just this helmet i have right here the um desert desert helmet but which is way better stats like way better we get crit and like other stuff so yeah now we'll also have that and like we get wooden case this which we don't have a, we don't have a fist style but all right i'll just cut it to when we actually get the items that we need oh we got sandpod helmet all right i wonder if one of these can give us the antenna okay i'm taking a lot of damage here and that's why we bought lemonade from the desert place which is um you know Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention this, but the, but before Deep Desert or during it, since you since you got all the mon uh, money and ores from being at the at the uh, mountains, you should go to Serpone's Law, which is above the Pogo Path. Oh, oops, but above the Pogo Path, and you'll have to buy um two items or, or the armor if you want to. The armor is also pretty good. I you, I, I, I kind of forgot it did this. You, you could have bought this earlier, but you know it's not that good of armor. But you what you want to buy is a Night Talisman and the Power Bracelet. And, um, we're just gonna go back and redo our accessory lineup, and then go back to, um, the desert. Alright, and this should be your lineup. And since we have 8 points left, um, you can pretty much do everything you want with this, but because of the area we're going to, we're just gonna get- we should have gotten Rampage. And, just why, why not, for the extra survivability, we could get Juggernaut or Tank, but I don't really go for Juggernaut unless I have Ace, so we're just gonna go for Tank. And for 2 points, it's whatever, but I usually prefer Focus because I, I can get out of attacks faster and roll. This should be your accessory lineup, but since we have the sandpod helmet, we might as well just use it. 
Alright, then start to bit of grinding. We have enough levels. So now this is what our lineup should be. I should have probably got Okay, just okay, I'm not gonna swap on I'm, I'm not gonna swap on my skills for this because I'm pretty good at the game. But for those who are less experienced, I would definitely suggest swapping out these three skills, rampage, tank, and focus, and have enough points to get rally ace so you can heal. But so here's how this fight usually goes. So it doesn't really have an attack pattern. Well it kinda does, but like Sometimes it goes a little off, but usually after doing all those attacks, it would do a little like ground pound, which you can parry the icicles by the way, or the spikes. And usually, usually it also does like a like a like where it goes on his back, which you have to roll or else you take damage. After that, it'll usually do the flurry attacks, which you have to parry every single one to stun him. You can't miss a single one or else he won't get stunned unless you're playing with multiple players. And with our new gear, this boss is kind of like a cakewalk. You can also roll that as well, but you should save your roll for this. But yeah, and that's pretty much uh, King Sandpot. He doesn't really have a second phase. He's a pretty he's a pretty simple boss. He'll do the roll if you're far away. Not the roll. He'll do the jump if you're far away. Roll randomly sometimes. I don't, I don't really know the AI of this dude. But he's a pretty simple boss. One of the easiest bosses in my game to get a hang of. And boom, we killed King Sandpot. And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to keep grinding until we get the rest of the drops. Because we're going to need some of these for later on. And also, we're going to have to backtrack so we can get the challenge medal. Alright, so now we have challenge medal. We're just going to get the appropriate skills very quick. Like, I would say, where you'd have Tenesky, Bloodthirst Ace, and Rally Ace by this point. And it's fine if you don't have these skills by this point. But by this point, you should at least have Bloodthirst Ace and Tenesky Ace. That's, that, that, that's, that's just my advice, though. And the only, pretty much the most useful accessory we have on us, even though all these are really good, by the way. Crowded Scalpel, definitely. So we're just going to swap the challenge medal, and then we're going to do King Sandpot again. Alright. And now it's time to do King Sandpod again. This shouldn't be too hard, like I said, you know. It's just King Sandpod. We activate this. Boom. Boom, boom. One, two, three. One, two, three. Heavy there. And then boom. Um, we pretty much got- Oh shit, wait, hold up. Yeah, but yeah. I was gonna say, um, because I almost ate my voice. Uh, you, this is not- Like, you don't really need to do this. Actually, you kind of do. Like, but like this is like probably really scary. You don't really like if you if you don't feel confident in your ability to kill King Sam with a challenge medal, that's fine. You don't need to get the helmet, but the helmet it will be useful for the rest of the playthrough because look, and we get the rest of the drops as well because they have challenge medal. I'm not sure if we will need Royal Antenna or the other antenna or later on in the playthrough, but they're just nice to have just in case you want to change something up. And now you'd want to replace your sandpod crown with the sand helmet because what this thing does is that on swords that have a spin attack like this for the heavy. It'll give you invincibility during it, which will be really useful for next episode. So yeah, that's uh, it for Hardcore Progression number 2. If you guys want to see some more, comment something down below. Like and subscribe to this video. Specifically this video if you want to see more, because, you know, I can check the stats of everything. Comment something down, comment some nice words. And thank you guys so much for us in the progression, and have a beautiful day.